Touch of Class, written and directed by Michele Swainston Harrison and Thomas Harris, produced for The Fundamentals. Episode 5 A Burglary. <gasps> Well, that is the fifth one o'clock ding this afternoon, meaning it is five o'clock. Precisely five days after our grand opening, and we have a total of how many customers now? Uh, two? Yes, two. Two customers in five days. And one of them mistook our shop for a chemist that sold Anusol and all things suppository-based. Well, look on the bright side. The other was that Sammy fellow who was extremely interested in the grandfather clock. Yes, but he didn't purchase anything now, did he? No, he he didn't. And the lack of customers is the least of our problems, let me Uh, tell you. What what other problems do we have? Is it me stealing your blanket at night? Because I I promise you that is not me. It is dark. I I didn't know it's your blanket. You've been stealing my blanket? Oh, Roger. Me? Roger, I am at the blanket end of my stealing? No, I, 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 I would it. never. Why, why would I do that? Why, shush, why would I steal your just, blanket? Just it's shush, your blanket. Roger, shush. I... What? Shush. Sorry. We live above this failure of a shop, and I am pretty sure that a rat lives in our fridge. And to top it all off, Donna hasn't returned since she stormed off from the grand opening. and she, She's gone, and... I miss her. So do I. But Jeremy, she did have a point. We don't even pay her. I, I, I know, I know, but... We can't even afford to run this shop, let alone pay her. I just... I, I was... <laughs> oh. Roger, I've let us all down. No, Jeremy. We've let us all down. You and me. Well... That's not any better, is it? No, I uh, I suppose you're right. Uh, well, you fancy some tea? Yes. Yes, please. Ah! A customer! Quiet! Shh. But it's five o'clock! It's tea time break. Shut up! See, now, smile at the gentleman in those... <laughs> oh, ah... Uh. Uh, flip flops. Uh, no, uh, you see, I believe they're called sliders. The foot attire of, of people who wear, well, um, all of that. <laughs> yes, um, jogging bottoms and a football jersey. <laughs> Hi there, what are you selling? Ah, uh, um, uh, 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 Roger? Uh, yes, oh, <laughs> well, um, no, uh, <clears throat> um, yes, uh, uh, Jeremy. Well, yes, exactly. That is what we say. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. What? Um, things. Things. Uh, things that are hmm. old. Old things. <laughs> Antiques, some would say. Well, are they? Oh, um... I wasn't expecting an interrogation. Well, neither was I. Well, well this isn't an interrogation. Uh, uh, so, um, sorry, sir. Um, it, it, it's just your face is very peculiar. What? Uh, yes, you seem to have all of your hair under your chin. And yet, yet none on your head. So? It's just peculiar, that's all. Is it not a bit unevenly weighted without the hair on your head to balance it out, you know? Look, I'm just here for some nice plates for my mum's birthday tomorrow, okay? And I thought an antique shop would be a good place to start. But I come here expecting good customer service and all I get is you two criticising my facial hair. (laughs) Um, well, uh, look on the bright side. Well, what's that? We could have been criticising your fashion choices. Or or your hygiene. Or the way you hold yourself. Is that meant to make me feel better? Well, yes, because we kept those criticisms to ourselves. Roger! By saying that we've kept it to ourselves, you've told him that we've we've criticised him. Oh, yes, sorry, I I see. Um, uh, We like your sliders. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. I feel so much better, you bigoted, egotistical pieces of shit. Oh, whoa, well, well now, that was a bit rude. Indeed, but uh, 
Commoners will be commoners. Uh, and yeah. uh, besides, uh, maybe it was the hair under his chin weighing down all his brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, I was surprised he wasn't talking out of his chin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that'd yes. be funny. Um, uh, that'd be funny. Quite weird, though. It, yes, um, I didn't know how that works. Uh, n- n- now, anyway, uh, would you care for some tea? Uh, yes, uh, and perhaps an early night. We can call Donna tomorrow, try and make it up to her. Oh, I knew I should have packed the bigger crowbar. Oh, Jesus, Splinter. Oh, that's never coming out. Okay, so where is this? Ah, oh, here it is. And now you are a pretty little clock, aren't you? Just what hamsters ordered. The question is, how do I move you from here to the van? Shh, 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 I didn't even touch you, shut up! Thank God no one's awake at this late at night. Sammy? Jeremy! R- Roger! Uh, uh, Sammy? Uh, uh, how are you guys? Um, all right. Uh, we, we, we were finding it hard to sleep again um, with the sound of that clock. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I remember that I left my earplugs on the table down here somewhere. Um, oh, those ones are over there. <laughs> yes, I, I thought as much. Um, how are you anyway? Fine, thanks. Just, you know, working. Ah, okay. Um, and what's all the um, black attire for then? <laughs> the goth? You know? <laughs> Work. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, are you an undertaker? Ooh. Uh, well, no, not, not exactly. Oh, of course. Mum's the word. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yes. Oh. oh, of course. Your secret is safe with us. What secret? Don't you worry. 007. What are, what are you talking about? You're obviously a spy. Shh, oh. shh, shh, shh. Oh. Well, I mean... Yeah, technically. Oh, and that piece of metal in your hand is obviously some sort of world-saving device. Yes, we've seen enough <laughs> yeah, of James Bond for this, yeah. yes. Yes, yes. It's, it's... That is also fascinating, Sammy. The real-life James Bond in our shop. Uh, <laughs> uh, however, it is um, quite late and the shop is closed, so unfortunately nothing is for sale at the moment. But um... <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I thought you would be open at one in the morning. Sorry, my, my bad. That's all right. Well, no problem. <laughs> you see, it's an easy mistake to make because of the grandfather clock over there. You know, it, it is always striking one o'clock, Bing. but it can be difficult to tell whether it is a.m. or p.m. So yes. I don't blame you at all. We've all done it. You know, going down mm-hmm. for lunch at one in the morning. <laughs> like, what? Yes. This is not right. <laughs> Many a time. <laughs> uh, well, um, since we're up, uh, would you like a cup of tea? Um, yeah, sure. Why not? Good. Uh, uh, you'll have to make it, though, because we never make tea unless we absolutely have to. What do you mean, then? How, how's it made? Um, uh, Donna. <laughs> oh, yeah, the assistant. Yes. Yeah, she's more than an assistant, you know. Yeah. Huh. Nice. Uh, so, do you two live up there? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Uh... Funny, that. I, I didn't see you two as living above a shop type. <laughs> Neither did we. We'd like to say it was temporary, but, you know... Yeah, yeah, well, well, try living on the streets for a year, then you'll know what rough is. <laughs> well, I'd say rough is the lack of a butler. <laughs> and the absence of a bed warmer that oh, the yes, maids put in the beds every evening before Betty buys. For the Ooh, bed and, and, you know, having to wake up on your own accord without someone ringing the bell. Yes, and then making your own breakfast. Oh. Oh, and, and your own tea. Oh, having a job. Oh, oh, to go horrors. back to the life of before. Mm. Yeah, yeah, having a job is the worst. Isn't, Isn't it, it just? just? So, you put up a lot of signs of those arms, do you? Well, well, what can I say? Closing the job description. It certainly is. <laughs> say, Bob. Want to see your work of art on the shop? <laughs> yes, I do, Donna. <laughs> After all, I am the real owner of this shop, if you ask me. Well, I am asking you. Are you now? Yes, I am. Let's go see it then. Why not? It's only... <gasps> four in the morning. <laughs> no way! I haven't stayed out this late since last week. Uh, same. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
What, why do you still work for those toffs anyway? Because I was employed by their father. He's very rich. But you, t- you, you told me that you, you got paid squat. I do. This is because the father gave the store to them and they haven't got any money. Well, why are you still with them then? I'd tell them to get fucked. La, 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 la. No swearing. What? Oh, no. I'm turning into them. <laughs> but, yeah, but seriously though, why? I don't know. They just need me. Uh, how, how do how do you mean? Well, they're not exactly cut out for this place. Who cares? Their father's probably gonna bail them out when they go crying to him. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't already. Oh well, they can't. Why not? Cause they can't. Well, good then. <laughs> About time they learned something the hard way. I think they already have. Oh, shut up. You know, they're privileged boys who've had everything given to them on a silver plate. If I had it my way, I'd run them out of these parts. No, you wouldn't. Are you protecting them? No. Well, um... Well, nothing, really. I, mean, I liked you because you seemed headstrong and a proper hard one, you know? But whenever someone starts insulting these princesses, you go all defensive. Well, you don't know them, that's why. Oh. Oh, so only once I've worked for them can I slag them off. I don't slag them. I just let off some steam. It doesn't mean I hate them. I would if I were you. Perhaps you should give this a break for a while. What do you mean? I mean, we only ever talk when you want to slag my bosses off. I mean, that's pretty hard considering they're absolute idiots. Maybe, but they shouldn't be judged just for the way they speak or act or... They they do that to you all the time. Well, it's like you said, they're idiots. You don't know what they're saying, really. It's probably them giving me a compliment. Donna, you need to stop giving them chances all the time. Well, maybe they deserve it. Why? Just leave it. You don't know them. They may well be snobby and all stuck up themselves and I want to slap them round the face every five minutes, but they're good-hearted. If it wasn't for them, I don't know where I'd be okay. When I was little, my father left and it was their father who took me and my mum in. But when he decided to bugger off to Colombia, he not only left his own kids, but he left me. Betrayed me. That's two fathers who have left me in 20 years. And yes, they might be snobs. And yes, they're naive in their views, but I've seen them at their weakest. We went through it together. It's almost like there's this unspoken bond. And they might not show it, but they love me. And at least with them, everything is as you see them. There's no masks or facades or lies. It's all truth. They're not like their father. Just for one second, put yourself in there. Brogues just for one second and imagine the strain of having to keep up appearances in front of the rest of their family and trying to keep the shop running all while being in the shadow of their father who let me remind you abandoned them and me oh okay well oh well when you put it like that wait whose van is that why is the door open? It's that bloody guy that asked me about the window. I knew he was dodgy. Give us your hammer. I don't carry my tools with me all the time. <laughs> no, he's hurting him. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Oh, Donna, you came back. I haven't quite forgiven you yet. Just one moment. <laughs> Oh, what? Oh, oh, my oh, oh, goodness me, Donna. Oh, look at that, it's working. The clock. And all it took was a little body slam. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, oh, no, please. Oh, I'm goodness so... me. Oh, oh. Don't worry. No, no. Oh, oh. 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 what are you doing no, here? The clock is broken. Donna, you broke oh. the clock again. Throw him, do throw him, throw him. No, no, no. No, don't do it. Don't Super do it. Alert. Leave me alone. Shut, Shut up. Please. Why are you here, you degenerate? Oh, that's a good <laughs> word. Wow, she's, she's educated herself oh, while she's been away. I'm casing this joint for someone else. Please, don't hurt me, Wait, please. Wait, sorry, sorry, casing? Oh. 
Oh, di- oh, is your is your cover that you work for a company which sells boxes and things? Ooh, oh, like a delivery man with the yes, boxes. Yes, like a delivery man. That's always a good disguise. No, he was robbing at you, fool. D- Donna, no, he is a spy. Shh. So I'm not a spy, you numpty. See, he will never crack. A hard as stone, they train them well, don't they? <laughs> mm, they do. I've seen James Bond. <laughs> Just like him. Just... I work for Lorenzo. What? Uh, Lorenzo, our our competition. <laughs> Yes, yes, I know who he is. Oh, sorry, okay. I, you know, I just didn't think you heard because you were like, what? No, no, and, no, no, you know, no that Roger, to... listen, the, the what, the what is like for dramatic effect. So it's, oh, um, it's, oh, it's yeah. shut it. Shut it. Sorry. sorry. Why are you doing this for him? Ooh. Ooh. Ah! Ooh. That, that hurt. So we can sell that clock on for a good price. <gasps> or one of you fools out of town. I thought he was Swiss. You what? Running you out of town. It's a bit American sounding, isn't it? And besides, running is for those who earn the minimum wage and have to chase after public transport. <laughs> yes, and if Lorenzo truly had class, you and I both know he would chase us upon a stallion. Oh, yes, you know. Oh. You know, it has been a while since I rode old Roger. <laughs> what? what? What do you mean, what? My horse is called Roger, and Roger's is called Jeremy. Perfect normal, we ride them every Sunday. We used yes, to. Yes, of course, I love to ride Jeremy. Guys, enough! We can discuss your weird horse fetish later. It's not a fetish. Which, right. Sit down on that chair, Sammy, before I make you. Uh, and you're going to tell us everything. Like what's in it for you. Okay. Oh, riveting. Donna. Thank goodness you've arrived. No, oh, that's all right. What would you two do without me? Yes, we needed a top up of tea an hour ago. We were going to wait for you to arrive in the morning, but but since you're here, you know you could get started. On oh, making... same old, same old. The tea can wait. Uh huh. Okay. You, Sammy, talk. All right. So I was born in a whorehouse to seven separate women. One called Janice who I like to name as my mother. She was a particular type of woman. One you'd say had a particular type of class about her. A lovely woman was she, my mother. Donna? A Touch of Class, written and directed by Micheli Swainston Harrison and Thomas Harris. Jeremy, played by Thomas Harris. Roger, played by Micheli Swainston Harrison. Donna, played by Sean McLaughlin. Sign Man, played by Taylor Maguire. Phil with an F, played by Aidan Jowers. Sammy, played by Alfie Ford.